free Friday webinar by American Tea Cell. Every Friday we offer a free webinar with me, Shelly Terrell, and currently I'm in Texas, but soon you will see me in Toronto, so that's really cool. I'll be with Tyson Seaburnt and um, at the Tea Cell Toronto event, so that's really, really cool. And today we're going to talk about fun with QR codes. So what is a QR code? Hmm, well here's a QR code here, it's a little fancy one. This is actually my QR code. So <laughs> you can actually take your phone and if you have a QR reader, you can scan it and then you'll be able to find my information, uh, more information about me. But that's not the reason to use QR codes necessarily. But let's find out first what is a QR code. QR codes are everywhere around us. And while I'm showing you this picture, I, I'm going to go ahead and put up this um, my webcam real quick because they're all around us. Basically, they are, and maybe you can see my video going, but even in the mail, you know, I received the mail today, and this is my bill, and I can scan that, and it'll take me to the website, and automatically, it's very quick. Like, instead of reading my mail, I can quickly scan that and then pay my bill. I mean, it takes seconds. And that's what QR means. It means quick response. So they're everywhere around us. If you look at the billboards in big cities, and if you go ahead and you do things like um, look just everywhere around you in a big city, then you'll find them in pretty much all big cities. I don't know about small towns, but I think even if you go to the grocery store or supermarket or food market that you'll be able to see them. You can see them in the back of some... Um, when you go shopping and you look at some of the products, you can find them in the newspaper. So they surround us already. This is a really cool one, I thought. They even put them on treats. So I saw some that were on cupcakes. I've seen some on dresses, on t-shirts. And this one was an actual lollipop. <laughs> um, a QR code is simply a barcode. Like when you go to the grocery store and you scan a product, then you can... Um, check the price of the product. But, I mean, it, you have to scan it, and it's very unique. It's like a thumbprint. Uh, you have one QR code, and that's your QR code, or the QR code for that. So one QR code won't be something else necessarily later. Um, and that's what it is. It's basically one of those little black squares. It usually has, like, three of the little boxes. There are some drawbacks. One of the drawbacks is that you need the technology. Um, a QR code does need a QR scanner to read it, and it has to be um, online for the QR codes. I mean, there's some things you can do with QR codes offline, but the majority of QR codes to be read, you have to have an internet connection, you have to have a QR scanner. Well, if you're already using iPads in the classroom, um, the STEM, some netbooks, or if you're using um, your iPods, or if you're using a smartphone, an Android, or an iPhone, or even a BlackBerry, then you can already automatically have a QR code reader for free. There are so many apps. I recommend uh, Q Quick Mark. Uh, regular cell phones, I, I guess, also have QR code readers. Now, the internet access. Um, that might be a challenge for you. But if you're using these in the classroom, then you may have these already. I like QuickMark. QuickMark's an Android, and it's on iPod, iPad, iPhone. This is what it looks like. You can easily create or scan. You don't have to necessarily just. But you have a scanning here, and then you can have a cre you can create. You can do contacts, location, website, text messaging. Um, email, text, and clipboard. But the, one of the best ones is the website. This is my favorite, is the actual website. And I'll show you all the cool things that teachers are doing with that right now. <laughs> um, so why QR codes? Why quick response codes? Well, one of the reasons why, you might think, oh, there's another fad, another thing I have to worry about. But it actually saves you a lot of time because it's quick response. But another thing is it gets students out of their chairs. When they're scanning the QR codes, um, this is really kind of exciting, you know. So it saves paper. It shows learning all around us. It promotes exploration. 
And one of the most important things is that it, learners interact with the world around them. So when you're scanning, you're getting out of your chairs, you're scanning with the phone, and also it's very, um, the exploration is really great. Somebody said there's choppy. I'm so sorry. It has to do with the bandwidth. So let me go ahead and see if I can, okay, so I'm going to stop sharing real quick, and then I'll come back to help with the bandwidth maybe. And then you can tell me if it's better or worse. Okay, how's that? Is that better or worse with the bandwidth? Seems better? Okay, great. <laughs> okay, uh, so we will go back. Here we go. Okay, so hopefully you can see this again. So we have the QR codes, and you can, this is what you can use a QR code with a URL for, so like a website, like I was saying, which is really fantastic because there's so much things that you can do. Um, and Joe Dell, who's really amazing, and you should check out his blog, especially if you're an English language teacher with technology, um, Joe Dell, he talks about how you can launch an MP3 player, play a video, visit a website, and contribute to it is what I've added. And also, students can become the content creators. And what we mean by this is this, that when you launch an MP3, that means that when you scan the QR code, it can automatically open to an audio boo if it's attached to audio boo or to Bookaroo, or to um, any kind of MP3, you just add the MP3 link. And then what you can do is you can listen to students. So I think that's really, really good is um, to be able to listen to students. And I saw something really cool with this. When I was at the British Library, they showed how around London they had these little QR codes. And you could scan the QR codes, and then it would come up with either like an audio file that they did digital storytelling. So you could go around all of it, and then you could hear stories about the particular location. You could hear the history of the location. And people read poetry about the location. People did videos. So you could do a YouTube video, and it automatically play as soon as you scan the QR code. So I think these are really great ways um, for students to be able to interact and share things. But the most important thing, when you have a QR code is to make sure, and even with all technology, that the student is the content creator. Okay, so how do you make your code more interesting? So you saw the one at the beginning, and this is what it, uh, another QR code looks like of mine. It's the same QR code, I just made it pretty. And you know your students, your students love to make things pretty and cool and kind of give their their very good um, take on it. So these are a few ways you can do that. Well, you can use iNigma, which a lot of people have been saying that is their preference. <laughs> um, there's Spar Q code. I'll show you. That's online, so you can actually do that online. You don't have to um, have um, you don't have to have a mobile device for that. Um, image editor, or you can do a QR code. You can do QR code with. The thing about QR Code Wiz, even though it's fast, it's a free, I mean, it's a free app, but you can't really do much with the free version. You have to pay like $3 or three pounds for the, uh, for the version that allows you to do a lot more. And you pretty much need that version. So that's the only drawback with that. Um, I actually made mine with the PowerPoint tools. I found it really easy to do. I just changed the accents on the picture. And then I just added a little text, my initials, SST, and then I put like a little heart. So <laughs> I thought it was really easy to just kind of do this with my, with, um, and I mean, you could do it with Photoshop. <laughs> as long as you don't mess up the code or tweak it too much, you'll still be able to get what it is. So that's really cool. This is what Sparky Code looks like, sparkycode.com. And when you go to Sparky Code, you can enter the URL. Um, and then you can go to a heading. You can have a subheading, 
Um, you get the code right here. And then you can even advanced options, and then you can color it. You can make it different color. So that's pretty cool. Um, SparkuCode.com. And this is all online, and it's free. Um, and you have different options with it. You can do a map. You can do a contact. Um, you can do SMS. So I would definitely recommend that for your students. Integrate online sites to enhance your QR code. So I'm going to show you WebDocs, which is the best, I think, <laughs> for because it allows you to do so much. It's like Glockster Amplified. So I'll show you what it is. Podomatic, and that's how you can do the MP3. So if you just want, I mean, sometimes I think it's really great for us to just be able to have students um, tell us digital stories. It doesn't necessarily have to be pictures so or a podcast. So every morning if the kids come in and, you know, you have a podcast of announcements and they can just scan the QR code and then they can hear the announcements for that. Uh, YouTube, you know, you can attach it to a YouTube video. And the, the trick is when you do it on a website, what you want to make sure is that the student is able, since we're doing it on mobile devices, on iPad, iPod, Android, you have to do something that uh, you have to integrate with a website that you can also have and see on the mobile device. WebDocs is HTML5, so that will show on Android, that will show on iPad and iPod. If you have Flash on a website, then you don't want to use that website because you're not going to be able to use, show the videos um, or things aren't going to come up. So that's one of the reasons why I recommend these particular, uh, because these work with mobile devices. You can see them quite well. And you can see videos, you can hear audio, and that's what you want, is that you want like different multimedia that you can have access to. Photo babble that's talking pictures. Basically, they have the pictures up there, and the student has voices. Um, they, they narrate their pictures. So photo babble is really great, and there's a photo babble app. Posturous, it's the easiest way to blog, posturous.com. And then you can add audio and video and all sorts of things. And it's so quick. It's really fast. And Blabberize. Blabberize, um, OK, so the trick about Blabberize, in order to view it, you have to make it in. Your Blabberize is so funny because you can take the mouth of the pictures and you can make them talk. But you have to create the video. And after the students create the video, then you can have a QR code for it. But let me show you the really cool ways that teachers are already using QR codes. Integrate with Realia, Realia, real objects, you know, that we bring into the classroom. And this one teacher here, uh, the PE geek, what he did, and I think this is just fantastic, is he took a skeleton. And usually, you know, you get the kids up there and you say, this is a mandala, where is the mandala? And, you know, it's like some of the kids are just bored, you know. A better way is this way. Tell them to take their mobile devices out. You have QR codes for each part of the body. They go, they scan the QR, the area, and they're able to find videos. They're able to go on an online forum and type um, answers to questions about it. They're able to see um, different types of websites with more information. So it's a fun way to explore. I mean, the kids, just having a phone, will scan the QR codes. And each of them you'll see exploring and really interested in actually learning about the human body. Or you can do this for any object. I mean, in language teaching, we have units all the time where we have to teach vocabulary. And I think this is a really great way to kind of drill and find the way to teach vocabulary that they'll remember and they'll be really excited about remembering. And the great thing is because these QR codes are saved in the history when the student wants to study, they just go to the history of what the QR codes were, and then they can go back and they can study. It's already on um, the mobile device. So when they're at home and they need to study for the test, then they can go back and they can refer to it. Or if they need the information for a project, then they can go back and refer to it. So there's so much you can do with that. QR codes plus web docs. Well, like I said, I love web docs. Web docs can look like this. Um, which is an e-portfolio, and that's a very, very um, popular way to use QR codes. Teachers are using them to do um, e-portfolios. It saves a lot of paper. 
So I remember when I used to have like a, a, a whole entire folder and my students would have to put it on a flash drive, but they would also have to have their folder, their ePortfolio folders. And these were huge. They were so big. And I always felt bad about the paper, but these were the papers. Um, these were their essays. These were um, ways that I assessed them. Everything they collected throughout the year. And at the time, I had added the flash drive because I thought, well, this way they can keep it for forever, you know. Well, now you can use a QR code. The student each gets their own QR code that they make, and they make real fancy because we learned how to do that. <laughs> and then you can see um, different things that they've integrated. Now, WebDocs makes it to where you all of these here are links. So like this, if I click here, that's a link to her Google Reader. If I do here, it's to her wiki or her wiki page. This is to her blog. This will show me her tweets. If I click here, this will show me her work on Edmodo. This will show me her work on EduBlogs, on Google. So it could be anything. It's all one location, and that's what I love about WebDocs. But let me show you more what WebDocs can do. This is a WebDoc as well. I can add a video. And because it's HTML5, the student can see this video. After they play the video, well, I can create a poll for them. And they can answer the poll. They can do all of this on their mobile device. As soon as they scan the QR code, this is what it would look like. They can watch the video really quick. And then they can, they can answer the poll questions. So that's another way. They can vote. They can do all sorts of things. These are the various types of apps that are located on your um, on web docs. So you have Twitter, you have a slideshow, you have yes or no questions, slide share. You can add that all in one place, links. The students can create their own polls. They can compare two videos. They love to do that, or two images. They really love to compare them to. But there's so many things that they can integrate with the web docs, so that's why I really encourage it. It's really easy to do. It's a free account. Um, so that's why I recommend it. <laughs> there are more ideas. There is a lot of things that you know students can do with QR codes. One of them is scavenger hunts. That's really a popular way. And um, most of you do your scavenger hunts already. Just make it into a QR code, and then they can go around the campus and they can look at the, they can scan the QR codes, and that's their scavenger hunt. I'll show you a really fast way to do this as well. Um, but cheats. Okay. So let's say you do game-based learning in your classroom or any kind of um, type of games that you use, um, like PlayStation games or Wii games, or some people do do that in the classroom. And something that we like is cheats or walkthroughs. And one of the things that you can do is you can have your students, when they scan a particular type of game, then they can find um, a forum of all the tips of where their fellow students went on and said, this is a quick way to do this in this game, or this is how you pass level 5, or you need to collect this and this and this and this to get to level 10. So I think cheats are a great way, game cheats. Um, or you can even integrate that and make that really fun for the test. Like, let's say you're going to have a test, um, and you want ways, you know, we call it cheats, but it's just a joke. But really, it's, you know, tips that maybe other students leave for the test. Oh, well, you know, if you look on page 54, you're going to find the answer to blah, blah, blah. And this way, students create it, and they remember the information instead of just having the test where they fill in all the bubbles, and then they don't remember it because they crammed it off. You can do tours. Um, somebody said, tell a story. Yes, digital storytelling. I forgot to put that. Um, you can do school tours where each important place, the library, the um, the outside playground, the football field, all of these are different places around the school. We'll put QR codes in them and have it to where the students can constantly come and they can add either stories, they can add pictures. I mean, they can add so many things about that particular site. And then you have students do tours um, and show new students around, or they can take them through the QR codes of that. Um, and it's a fun way to use the language. Make sure that the students are content creators. Um, you can have online forums. You can attach it to a wiki, and then the students can go, and they can automatically fill out a question um, or add to the forum more information. Book reviews. So have 
QR codes with any of the books in your um, that you want the students to read, especially if they're choosing a book and you have a list of books they want them to read. Have them the reviews. They can be video and uh, video reviews or audio reviews from other students who have read it in the past. So this is something that continually builds. If you're going to use the same like books for a long period of time, then the students will be able to say, "Oh, this is the book that I want to use." After they see the reviews, um, polls. You can have them easily answer polls. You can do a murder mystery. I really like this one. And what you do is you basically have the students go around and they scan the QR codes, and each QR code will add to um, a clue. And then the whole entire class has played a murder mystery. They find different clues. And the people giving the clues, and it could be audio, video, it could be written, it could be picture, any of that. Um, and I say integrate all of that in a murder mystery. Um, and the students are the ones who are providing this. So you're not you save so much time because the students are the ones providing the work. They're the ones who are creating the QR codes. They're the ones creating the videos, the audio, and the websites, and the pictures. Um, and, and then I also like, if you like this, then. So this is really good also for books, where not only do you have the review, but you tell the student. You know, a lot of students, um, for example, they like uh, Twilight or Harry Potter. Then you can say, another student can say, well, I mean, as a teacher, I'm not always up to date. I try really hard to be up to date um, on whether or not, you know, I know all the top books that students like, but I'm not really that keen on it. So what I like to do is ask the students, you know, what are other books that are similar to Harry Potter that, you know, would be, you, you would suggest for other students? And then they can say, if you like Harry Potter, then you'll love blah, 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 blah. And then I have a list of books that others have read. And these are books that the kids want to read. So, And it also encourages further reading. Um, you can do this in music as well. Further exploration of co difficult concepts. This is a periodic table of videos. Now, in chemistry, I had a really hard time with, you know, the different elements and what they do. And if I mix you know, lithium with aluminum, what is that going to give me? And I had all this experiments, and it was so difficult for me to understand, well, QR codes have made this great, because now you can actually, you can scan all of these, and it shows you videos of the elements. I mean, how cool is that? But you can do so much more. Imagine if we go back to the web doc. You have a video, and then afterwards you could have another video. You can have a series of videos that show you different experiments, uh, that ask you questions, that um, ask you to take a poll, you know. Um, so there's so much you can do. Well, I thought for language teaching, why don't you do that with something such as accents or the phonetic, the phonomic, uh, phonetic chart? You know, there's so many difficult things where the, stu uh, the student can actually go and listen to the sound of the phonetics for language teaching, and then they can do a boogaroo and they can actually compare their sound to the sound of the phonetics and see if they get it right. You can do that for a list of grammar. You can do that for uh, verbs, uh, for nouns, for, for different things like that. And these are things that we usually have to drill, and they're not very fun. So that's why I think it's a really great way to make it more interactive and that students remember it. And it's multimedia, so it really appeals to their learning styles. Uh, this is a QR treasure hunt generator. So this is the easiest way. So I said the scavenger hunt. Well, this is sort of the same thing. It's a treasure hunt. And thanks to Russell Tarr at R-U-S-S-E-L-T-A-R-R -S -S -E on Twitter, who creates amazing things at costtools.vet, he has created the easiest way to create a QR treasure hunt. It's a QR treasure hunt generator. Basically, one, you, sum, you input a series of questions and answers. And that's what the student will do. Two, create a QR code for each question. And three, put the QR codes around your school, and then the students find the answers to the questions. So see how easy that is? That just makes it so much easier. Well, thank you so much for coming today. <laughs> I really hope that you learned a lot. And um, really thinking about the ideas that you can do with, with QR codes.
And so if you would like more information, you can always scan my QR code here. And you can find how I have integrated this with WebDocs and see what a great way that WebDocs um, shows up on your phone. Now, one of the things about WebDocs uh, that I didn't say is it has a Vimeo. And what I would choose if you're doing videos on WebDocs, make sure it's YouTube because my Vimeo videos didn't show, but the rest of them did show. So if you can test it right now, you can see how easy it is, and you'll be able to see um, exactly how this works and how you can use it with your students. So I'm going to go ahead and open it up to questions. Uh, let me go back here. And you can see my lovely face again. <laughs> Hi, everyone. And if you have any questions, you're more than feel free to ask. And if you have any ideas, let me know. And let me know, and I'll go ahead and I'll uh, let you talk about what you're doing in your classroom with QR codes. Oh, the red one didn't work. Sorry. <laughs> Maybe I should, uh, let's see if I can... Hit it up in a little bit. <laughs> okay, well, I'll go ahead and put the bit.ly address. How about that? Well, iEnigma might be a better one. Although I've never had. <laughs> You're welcome. Does anybody have any questions? So it looks like with iEnigma, that's a really great way to scan code. So that seems what a lot of people are recommending. Um, oh, you did. But now you do, Elizabeth Ann, do you have one um, now? Elizabeth, do you have one? Okay, let me do, uh, let me give you all the links right now. This will be helpful. Um, so you can find this. And it's the links today are under um, M Learning. Yes, there will be a ranking. That's a good question. So is there a transcript of this webinar? Yes, there is. It'll be up by next week, and it will. If you go to this uh, website I just put, um, then you can go ahead and you can um, do that. You can you can find it next week. Okay, Nora, no problem. Yeah, the video is always next week um, that they post it. Um, somebody asked a question earlier. Let me see if I can find this question. Somebody asked, "Do you need a camera or a laptop?" And then Peggy said you can take a, okay, that you can take digital, with a digital camera that you can take pictures of the QR code. Or if you do have a cell phone, most cell phones have, have it to where you can just uh, click it. So if you want, you can go ahead and do that. And then later on when you're on the web, you can upload those to, um, to a website like the scanqrcode.com. And then you'll be able to see the QR code. Or you can do it to a QR code scanner and read it. You could carry a laptop. Well, if you don't have cell, a cell phone, uh, if you have a, a digital cameras, do they have digital cameras? Oh, I'm so sorry, Minghan. You can't view it in China. Um, well, here's the other one, um, M Learning Link. Well, they have to be online, and for, but they could carry around the laptop. <laughs> and I'll have the last slide soon. If you need a certificate, I am doing them right now. Some people have gotten them already. And